What makes Atlantic tuna such a remarkable fish is not only its immense size and uh, the, the considerable age that it can reach and its beautiful flesh um, that uh, is indeed very tasty. But it's the fact that it is the, the most perfect animal, uh, the Ferrari of the sea. Western bluefin are incredibly depleted. In Canada, they're actually up for endangered species listing. They're declining, declined incredibly really since the 1950s. So they're at an all-time historic low. Now it's pretty clear that the initial decline in the population abundance was caused by overfishing. And it's also pretty clear that the fact that the population has not rebounded to any higher level of abundance is also due to continued overfishing. First of all, recruitment really matters in terms of management because it's the number of new individuals coming into the breeding population or the, pop or the fishable population in any given year. The debate is over whether the past pattern of recruitment is the one that should be considered as the best evidence we have about how productive the stock is, or in fact the productivity of the stock has changed and in fact is now lower than it was in the historical record. Really the only working hypothesis for many years was uh, what we call today the high recruitment hypothesis, which says if you allow, uh, if you let the exploitation rate uh, lower, you allow the population size to grow larger, and the more adults you have, the more recruits you have. That's kind of the normal working hypothesis in pretty much all of fishery stock assessment. Back uh, some 10 or 15 years ago, uh, there was a lot of pressure for ICAT to reduce fishing quotas for West Atlantic bluefin tuna. And those reductions were going to be painful under the high recruitment hypothesis. And in my view, there was uh, a lot of interest groups that uh, had a lot to do with the current fisheries, back then current fisheries, uh, that didn't want to go through that pain, that painful reduction in quotas, in order to realize a higher stock size at some point hypothetical time in the future. Uh, so they are, in my, in my view, the ones who came up with this plausible uncertainty. Some people have said, well, maybe there has been a so-called regime shift. That means a fundamental change in the oceanography of the Atlantic. And that's the explanation for why the stock is not more productive now. And that's an interesting hypothesis, but there really isn't any evidence to support that in the record. In my opinion, if you do the simple analysis on the information that's available now, you would, you would really reject the low productivity hypothesis as not likely. There's a lot of people out there that may want to believe in this low recruitment scenario because if that's the case, technically speaking, Western Atlantic bluefin tuna are not ever fish which would lead them to believe that we should be able to increase, increase the amount of fish that we're allowed to harvest each year. But if we follow that scenario, and that scenario is not true, what we end up doing is further overfishing a stock that's been chronically overfished for decades. If you look at the data, you see that when there were a lot of adults, they made a lot of young bluefin tuna. And when there aren't a lot of adults, you don't get a lot of babies. That is pretty logical, it's pretty elementary, and you see it in the data. Managers are not, are not there to, to enable the fishery, the fisheries, uh, fishing industry, to make short-term profit as high as possible, but to ensure that the fishery can go on in uh, decades to come. And uh, thus, managers should be precautionary, listen to the science, and uh, thus ensure the success of what they're trying to do. We would like to see bluefin tuna managed so that in the years to come we're going to see more fish. Hopefully we'll see more bigger fish and who knows, ultimately have the ability to harvest more fish. But if it means in the short term that we have to reduce the number of fish that we're harvesting, we think that's the right way to go for the long-term benefit of the species. I would say a lot of eyes, um, Canadian eyes in particular, but a lot of eyes will be on the managers and the decision makers to do the right thing for bluefin tuna, to follow scientific advice, to, to make decisions based on precaution and an ecosystem approach, and to do that in a, in a very responsible, accountable, transparent manner. I think that the only way to see which of the two recruitment hypotheses uh, is right is through actually going through the uh, exercise of reducing fishing pressure and being patient as soon as the stocks uh, begin to recover, 
uh, not to go and, and increase fishing mortality. Uh, one has to be uh, patient in a rebuilding program for the time that it takes uh, to rebuild the stock. Western Atlantic bluefin numbers are still only 36% of what they were in 1970. And while we're seeing a glimmer of the possibility of recovery with the last stock assessment, we want to make sure that quotas are set in a precautionary way that allows that to turn into a real recovery, benefiting both the commercial and recreational fisheries and the marine ecosystem for generations to come.